All right. Well, welcome back to Tech Skills Day, where we're going to be talking about getting your hands dirty with AI sandboxes with Haley Schuler. Haley, welcome. Thanks for having me, Drew. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, obviously, a, a pretty hot topic uh, these days. You know, everything about you know AI and and you know, interestingly enough, that's like there's a good reason for that, right? I mean, for for a little while now. A lot of companies um, and individuals are being asked to do more, right, with a lot less. And that's resulting in a lot of technologists that have to take on a lot more work, right, um, you know, due to hiring freezes, budget cuts or whatever, right? And so, you know, hey, is, is, is AI the answer? Well, I mean, there's a lot of people that, that, that tend to, to think so, and, and there's a lot of promise in that. And it was interesting, there was a stat out the other day that was talking about from, from Gartner that it was only a, uh, like 2023, they said, oh, you know, you're going to have about 10% of software engineers using, you know, AI for coding and things like that. Well, right now that projection has gone up to 75% by 2028. So what's, what's your take on that? Are you, how are you uh, feeling in that skeptic, uh, you know, on, on that skeptic ring, Taylor? Oh, I am excited about it. I feel like everyone is jumping into Gen AI. I mean, I've even had conversations with people not even in the technology world trying to learn how to utilize it. So I think we're just going to see that usage going up more and more. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, uh, I, I, I would agree. There's a lot of people right now that are just trying to figure out like, you know, what do we mean by Gen AI? And, and you know, in, in terms of cloud computing, I'd always talk about getting literate, right? Kind of starting off and learning the lingo. Um, and there is a lot of lingo with with AI, Haley. Would you agree with that? Yep. Oh, totally. I remember jumping in and seeing words like language learning models and tokens and prompting and just being like, what is this new world? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is it it's important to sort of get your your baseline from the language or the literacy, right? But mm -hmm. um, I think it's even more important, right, that once you have the language to go out and use it or become a little bit fluent in that, right? So what's what's your, what does that mean with AI, right? Because there's a lot of different uh, flavors of, of AI and Gen AI. You know, when you go from a literacy to a fluency, what does that what does that mean to you? Yeah, totally. For me, that means kind of taking what you've been learning and consuming and actually going and applying that in a more hands-on type manner, which is leading into this AI sandboxes solution that we've built. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about uh, um, this just released on A Cloud Guru, going to be coming over to Pluralsight here any day now. And, you know, um, you know, learning by doing has been something that we're very passionate about. And really, a lot of it is because, you know, hands-on skills development, I think it has like a 75% retention rate versus your sort of more, you know, traditional methods. And we've seen it uh, obviously result in also performance on the jobs, which is, uh, you know, pre pretty impactful as well. So, well, all right, without any further ado, like, let's go build, right? Like, like what, totally. you know, let's talk about, like, let's get these sandboxes. And, and, you know, as you're bringing that up, when I say things like, hey, it's a sandbox or it's a, you know, a live environment, um, you also hear playgrounds. Like, can you just, like, what does that mean? Like, when, when folks are new to this, what do we mean by sandboxes and playgrounds and live environments? Totally. That is a great, great question, Drew, and a good segue. So sandboxes are basically real live practice environments where you're given access to different technologies to practice and play around with. So for example, instead of having to like create your own account on something like AWS and worry about figuring out these new services and maintaining costs and controlling things, you actually can spin up an AWS sandbox in Pluralsight and get instant access to a cloud account where you can practice to your heart's desire all while we are maintaining the cost and feature control of your experience. So it's a great, safe way for you to practice and play around before you're hopping into a real production environment. I, I love it. It sounds like when I was trying to teach uh, my kids, you know, how to drive, it was one thing to like read the manual from a literacy perspective, but right. you know, before they get out on the road, right into these production environments, you know, what, what's that middle ground and, and you know going to a, a a parking lot maybe with some cones around where yeah they're behind the wheel but you're sort of minimizing the blast radius it sounds like a little bit that the sandbox is uh, probably the equivalent from that perspective right totally totally all right well let's get going here i'm interested to see we got a, a few different sandboxes so if you want to go ahead and run us through these 
Yeah, absolutely, Drew. So like you said, we have three different sandbox experiences because we know there are so many people new to AI and Gen AI, and we wanted to make sure we curated experiences for every type of learner, whether you're new to the experience or you've been in the AI world for a while and you want something a little bit more advanced. So the first sandbox that we have here, Drew, is the prompt sandbox. And I think this is what most learners are going to be super excited about using. It's something that any type of learner, even if you have no technical experience, all the way up to our more advanced AI learners like software engineers and data scientists, they're going to be able to utilize this experience. So I'm going to go ahead and open this sandbox up. And as you can see here, we have this prompt and send prompt. So I want you to kind of think about ChatGPT. I think most of us are kind of like familiar with ChatGPT and how you can send in a question or a prompt to this AI model, which is a language learning model, the LLM you see here, and then get a response back. So the prompt sandbox is a really elevated version of this experience to help empower our learners in practicing with different LLMs. So I'm going to come in here and type a prompt. What is the best front end programming language? This will be interesting. All right, so the first really neat thing about this experience is we're not only giving users experience to ChatGPT, for example, but learners can actually go through different LLMs like Jurassic, Claude, Llama, and we're continuing to add more as we gain support from them. And you might be wondering, Drew, like, what, why do we need to have these different LLMs? What is the use of this for learners? Well, if you aren't familiar with Gen AI and LLMs, there are actually several different use cases depending on which LLM you are choosing. Some are better for more abstract problems. Some are a lot better for coding. And so we knew we're getting lots of different types of learners in here, lots of learners that don't quite understand the different experience between each LLM. So you want them to be able to select between different LLMs, as you can see here, and play around with them and see which is the best for their Yeah, users. that's really interesting because, um, you know, in, in, in the sort of in the cloud computing world, right, mm -hmm. I think the equivalent is you have these things called virtual machines and you have different right. types of virtual machines you can run based upon different things that you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. you're trying to do analytics or you're trying to do streaming and you're trying to right. figure out, you know, how do I find the right machine to, to use? The LLM seemed like the equivalent to that, right? You have to be able to figure totally. out what's right to opt for your particular workload. Absolutely. That is so true, Drew. So we'll go ahead and send this prompt through. And as you can see here, we're getting this response back from ChatGPT right away. Now we are exposing some metrics because we want this to be a true learning experience for our learners. That's what our platform is about. So we're exposing things like tokens, which correlate to the numbers of characters slash words you're using and the cost. And we are also exposing the cost for the prompt and response. Now, this is not a cost that learners are consuming. This is plural site consuming the cost, but we just want learners to start associating that there is a cost that comes along with prompting. So, so there, is there a cost when you talk about it? So that the, the almost a little bit of analysis to say, well, you might have really high performance in this particular model, but right. oh, by the way, the cost is going to be pretty high as well. Totally. Uh, versus, you know, you might just need this lower optimized model where it's going to have a much better cost position. So this is a good sort of sandbox to be able to learn those things. Totally, Drew. And that goes great into my next point of this is we actually have the ability for a learner to send a prompt to two LLMs at the same time so they can instantly see and compare the responses from each LLM so they can see, you know, which one has a better quality response. They can also compare things like the token amounts used and the cost as well. So like you said, they might want an LLM that is more specific um, or they might want that is a little bit more cost effective. So it really just depends on the user and they have a great way to compare this live. Yeah, Battle, yeah. battle royale for uh, against LLMs, right? So yes. this is this is great. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And the last little piece of this for our more advanced learners is we're actually exposing the sandbox URL and API key. So for our software developers, maybe they want to start practicing around with how do I 
include prompting into my own applications. They can utilize these APIs to send requests to the LLMs and get responses back in their own applications um, and start practicing with that. So again, this is something really great and really unique with having all of these different LLMs in one location instead of learners having to set up their own accounts, maybe worry about costs and things like that. It's all in this one place. Yeah, that seems like a pretty big differentiator here. I mean, a sort of a one-stop shop versus having to provision, you know, your, your different setups and access to going to, you know, this particular uh, uh, provider for testing out this LLM and another one, another one. This is just all in one, one place. That's certainly, certainly convenient. Totally, totally. Awesome. Well, I'm going to hop out of the prompt sandbox and head on over to our AI cloud sandboxes. So with the AI cloud sandbox, with this, a learner is going to give be given access to a cloud account. So they're going to get AWS or GCP or Azure, whichever one they want. So I'm going to go ahead and choose AWS and start at my sandbox. And I'm going to get this sandbox that I can instantly log into with the credentials given to me. So with this access, a learner is going to be able to log into the console. They can access different services, like for instance, EC2 and S3, if you're familiar with cloud services. But additionally, alongside that, learners are going to be able to access AI cloud services. So in AWS, that's going to be Bedrock and SageMaker. In Azure, that's Azure AI Services. And Google, that's Vertex AI. So I know this is going to be really exciting for a lot of our you know, cloud engineers, software engineers. But even our less technical learners, you can hop right in here and utilize something like Bedrock. And I'm going to come in here. If you aren't familiar with Bedrock, um, it's an area where you can use different models. And again, play around with prompting. I'll open one up here. You can play around with things like the parameters, temperature, and top P. So again, a little bit more advanced of a prompting experience. But learners can come here and play around. They can see how to integrate this within their own cloud architecture. And again, in this secure environment where they're not having to worry about racking up costs. This is so cool. Um, I mean, so many companies right now seem to be trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to be leveraging services like uh, Amazon Bedrock from, from AWS to build AI solutions to deliver to customers? And I think this is a great way to, to help with that experimentation, which is such a fundamental part of the cloud. I was just listening to a talk the other day. Uh, Custom Inc. is using Amazon Bedrock for generating a lot of the images as people come in to yeah. uh, you know, try to figure out their T-shirts. And, and so you know, they're building different agents on this, using this particular thing. So, so many different use cases, but this is a great way to come in and experiment without having to you know, uh, incur a bunch of costs as part of that, right? It's, it's pretty totally. neat. Totally. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and hop over to our third experience, Drew. And this one is going to be a really niche experience for our more advanced AI learners. So people like data scientists, machine learning engineers, and some software developers are going to be really excited about this. And what it is, is a one-click experience into a SageMaker Studio notebook. So a learner is going to be plopped right in here. They can play around with different models. They can do things like working with data sets working with different programming languages, and all without the hassle of having to install this on your own um, laptop or computer and having to set things up, worry again about costs or configurations. It's all just easy access for you to jump in and start playing around. That is pretty awesome. So it seems like the, you know, the, the solutions here, they, they, it's almost like Goldilocks, right? And the three bears in terms of, you know, you're starting off in, in, term, in, in the LLMs, a little bit more of the prompt engineering, looking at you know what models are, are most optimized for you and getting comfortable with that. Then going into the actual services within the particular cloud providers right. and saying, well, hey, how do I leverage those models and potentially integrate them with other cloud services to start building um, and putting together these pieces for, for customer value? And then there's the, the data analytics, the real underlying mm -hmm. heavy duty heavy lifting machine learning. And you mentioned, I know, uh, with, with AWS um, on SageMaker in particular, um, and all of that's available currently on A Cloud Guru and soon to be available any day now with Employal Site. Is that, is that right? Did I get that right? Yes, totally, Drew. You summed it up perfectly. <laughs> 
Well, I, I love it. So, all right, we have a lot of folks that are, you know, in, in different uh, stages of the career. We're going to be doing a lot of talk uh, coming up here about, you know, really getting started with your, your your cloud career journey in particular and importance of certifications and hands-on experience is such a big part of that. Yeah. As folks want to get started with AI and get access to these labs, like what's your recommended starting point? What's What's that call to action around? Okay, well, great. These exist. What do I do now? Absolutely. Well, like I said, the Prompt Sandbox is a perfect place for anyone to start. Even if you're not familiar with it, it's really easy to use. You're just typing in a prompt and sending it. And even if that's intimidating to you, we also have a number of an amazing prompting courses and other Gen AI and AI courses on skills and on ACG that learners can jump in and start learning if they're wary about hopping into these experiences. But I have to say, Prompt Sandbox, anyone can use it. Kelly, thank you so very much for walking us through this. I'm really excited about this being integrated uh, into, into the whole kit and caboodle on, on Pluralsight. 